Hi, everybody. I am Prosper Tomiwar, um, the co-founder and the lead engineer at Eden. Eden is a startup based in Lagos, Nigeria, that provides home services for Nigerians, just you know, really aim to improve the quality of Nigerians and Africans in general. And I will be talking about media performance at scale. Uh, so let's get started. So let's look at some statistics uh, from smartinsights.com. You can see like uh, the total population of people as against the total number of internet users you have here. And if you look at the social media use around the world, you can also see the total number of you know, people using their mobile phones to access social media and uh, access the internet. I want you to just keep this in mind because it's going to be useful as we just you know, keep talking about our media performance. So let's look at the world's most used social platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, uh, FB Messenger, Instagram, TikTok. So this should give you a general idea of how you know, people interact with media files across the internet. Like people send, people upload a lot of YouTube videos, people send files, uh, media files all over Instagram. TikTok is the new sensation. You know, people send a lot of videos, uh, you know, over the wire on TikTok. People send videos to their friends. Uh, people, you know, put videos on the internet, funny videos, um, videos that teach people how to do things. And same thing with Snapchat and Twitter. So this just gives you an idea that a lot of media files are like transferred across the internet. Uh, right now we're in a, 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 a pandemic era and a lot of things have come online. You know, people that used to do work physically now do Zoom meetings every day. Uh, people video call their parents, people video call their loved ones all the time. So there's literally a 1000X increase in the media files that's shared across the internet. And this is a call for concern because all these platforms, Zoom, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, House Party, uh, TikTok, FaceTime, billions of media files shared, you know, video streams, images, different types of files. So you can imagine, it can give you an idea of how, like all these media apps at scale, uh, literally handling performance, you know, handling performance on your servers and handling performance on the client, which is like the device that the user is using. So one thing I need you to know is that when you're talking about media performance, media performance is, is user experience, media performance is optimization, media performance is speed, uh, media performance is also accessibility. And when you look at the media bottlenecks for performance in a general web app, especially a modern web app, we talk about JavaScript, CSS, fonts, and media files. But today we're not talking about JavaScript because that's an, an entire talk on its own. We are just going to focus on media performance. Right? How do you take care of images, your videos, your GIFs on your web app in a way that provides a very intuitive and fast loading experience for the user? These are some of the major bottlenecks for media performance, you know, large images, loading tons of images at once, inconsistency in the video formats, large video files, blunter disregard for the user's hardware and network, inefficient, you know, video catching and also failing to measure media performance. So this is, <laughs> this, what you're about to see right now is how customers painfully experience some of these products. Yeah. So a customer loads your web app or a customer loads your app and is trying to just like go through all the images and videos and they are either waiting for the images to load or for some reasons the video buffers every five minutes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that in 2020, this is not like experience for a lot of people, but you know, a couple of years ago we had this, this was pretty common. And then you have to have like a very strong, you know, internet connectivity for you to enjoy whatever you're watching on the internet. Or you just download, you download and watch it later. Yeah, your users are really suffering. So we are going to talk about some techniques and tips that you can use to mitigate all of this. It's crazy, but it doesn't have to be. So how do you scale media performance in your own apps? Things to consider. Number one, leverage CDNs for globally distributed caching, okay? So what you should not do is serve images from your, your server. You know, you, you, you should have different types of server for everything, your database server, your, your, your ready server for caching, and then your file server. So you do not have to host these files and your images and videos yourself. Just put it in a CDN. And the good thing about CDNs is that they cache your files. So if a user has requested a file before in the client, if the user is trying to request that file again, it just serves a cached copy. And a, a, a CDN like Cloudinary has what you call the multi-CDN strategy, which means 
for your users, you know, spread across different parts of the world. For example, if I'm trying to access your file from Lagos, it serves the file closer to the edge. When I mean closer to the edge, I mean it looks for a server that is closer to me in Lagos and just serves the media file to me, right? If somebody's in San Francisco, it looks for the server that is closer to, to the person in San Francisco in the US and serves that file. So this, in essence, makes file retrieval very fast. So your images are downloaded on the client very fast. Your videos play very fast. Um, you can also use Tombow. Tombow is uh, an open source CDN that you can host yourself if you don't want to you know, use Cloudinary or Kamai or Cloudflare. Number two, ensure you always compress your files. You know, one thing I see a lot is people upload files and then the platforms do not compress, you know, as much as possible. Or I look at uh, media uh, news sites, you know, when, when an editor is, you know, writing something, they attach a file, those files are not compressed. So you see a file of 2 MB, 10 MB, 15 MB, just sent across the internet. Why, why do you have to do that? You don't have to do that. When you look at these two images, for example, the first image by the left is 2 MB, uncompressed. Look at the image by the right, 918 kilobytes. Now, if you look at these two images, you cannot spot the difference. They look the same. So what does it say about compression? If you compress, there are a lot of bytes you literally save your users. You, know, you save your users, uh, you, you shave off a lot of bytes so that your users can download the file faster and also your users can save data. Very, very important. So always compress your image files. And what are the tools you can use for image file compression? You can use image mean, uh, this is a JS conference, so I didn't bother talking about uh, putting all the other tools that you can use, but image mean is an NPM module that you can use to compress your files. You can also use Cloudinary. Cloudinary also does this stuff that I really like. It's very amazing. If you're not trying to use the SDK, you can just do this on the fly. So the URL that retrieves the image, just put in what you call QAuto. Q auto automatically compresses the files on the server so that by the time the user is accessing the file on the client, it is compressed by default. Number three, normalize lazy loading your images. Uh, if you look at Instagram by the left, you can see when you scroll, the images do not appear at once. Some images appear and then when you scroll to the end of the feed, there, there is another set of content that is being pre-batched so that you, know, you can just have a seamless experience. So what you should do in your apps is load only what the users will, feel, will, 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 will see first and then lazy load the rest. Now, some of the tools you can use, before now, we didn't have this you know, attribute, but now we have a native loading lazy attributes functionality on your browsers. Um, from Chrome 76, you can start using this. And if you do not, if you are trying to accommodate this for all your users, you can use a polyfill. A polyfill, loading attribute polyfill will ensure you have this for older browsers or for older uh, mobile browsers. You can also use these libraries, the user library, yo.js, uh, cloudinary.js, SDK, and all you need to do is just assign a loading attribute with a lazy value to your images and boom, takes care of it for you. You can also do that for your videos. In fact, you should do that for your videos. For the videos, for the off-screen videos, always you know, lazy load them so that they don't just appear at once because the user it's not trying to watch it at the same at, at the time they come to your site. They are at the top. So if the videos come underneath, you do not have to load those videos first. Let the user get to the, you know, to the end of the feed before you load those videos. So please lazy load everything. Also, do not image resize on the browser. Honestly, don't. I, I see folks use CSS to adjust the size of images on browsers. Now, for the user, this the user does not feel anything. The user is just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. But what is happening under the scenes is that the large file, the high quality file and the you know, high resolution file is downloaded already to the browser. So you've already wasted the user's data by downloading the original size. And then now you're using CSS to resize. No, all of that should be done on the server. The resizing should be done on the CDN so that it just fetches the exact size that is needed for the user. Don't hide images with CSS, please do not. Uh, this, is, this is pretty common. If you go to five in 10 websites, you see this image display node. <laughs> but then this is just aesthetics because on the website, you don't see the image, but if you go through the Chrome Dev Tools and see the image has, been, has, has literally been downloaded. The image was downloaded already from the server and you're just using CSS to hide. So what are you accomplishing really? It's just aesthetics. The user cannot see it, but then the image file was still already downloaded. That means you've wasted the user's data. So please do not hide images with CSS. Um, another thing that I'll advise you to do is, I know your PNG, I know you love your PNGs. Oh my goodness. PNG 
is a very quality file. It also provides transparency. The images are sharp. Please do well to use WebP file formats, WebP and JPGs in, you know, in place of PNG. You probably don't need that PNG file. On that new site, you probably don't need that PNG file. On that um, app, you don't need it. Because JPGs can literally give you the same you know, good quality that is closer to that PNG. So you shave off these bytes and you give your users a good experience while still saving their data. Because with WebP, WebP is a file format that gives you a good quality, but with a very smaller size. And if you look at the case study here, YouTube switched to WebP thumbnails and they got 10% faster page load. Facebook too did the same thing. And they discovered their sites became 25% faster. People could load Facebook you know, easier and in, in, in less time than before. And it also reduces data consumption. Let's, let's, let's not forget that. So please try to use WebP. And um, one of the ways you can do this is, um, right now you are, you are already probably thinking, man, this is a lot of conversion I have to do. Uh, you probably have to set up a build script. You have to you know, come up with a whole module that converts these files. With Cloudinary, you do not have to. Cloudinary has a feature called F-Auto. You know, the other time I talked about Q-Auto that reduces the quality of the file. F auto automatically fetches the most optimal and efficient format for the file that is being retrieved on the client. So this is what happens. You have a URL for the image. Immediately you put the F auto, as you can see on this slide, it looks at the user's browser and also looks at the strength of the user's internet connectivity to determine the type, the most efficient format to serve the user. So it doesn't matter if the, the file was already in PNG or, or JPG or whatever. As long as it is serving it on the client, it serves an optimal format. So if the user is using Chrome, it will serve a WebP. If the user is using Internet Explorer, it serves a JPEG XR format. And what you, what you can do is, if you try it, try to save on the, on the um, try to save a file. You discover that the file format that you are seeing originally is not the same file format that it tries to save. You know why? Because even though you put PNG, Cloudinary say, yeah, that's great, but then that's not you know, really efficient for this user. So we're just going to serve it as WebP, which is, which is totally amazing. I've not seen this uh, any in other, any other place before. Sprites. You know, there is a popular saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. And I said it. And I just wanted to say a CSS image sprite is worth a thousand images. Uh, a very good example of this is you're working in a sidebar. The sidebar UI components that loads a lot of icons or loads maybe like company logos. You do not have to load several company logos. You can literally load one image file, an image file that contains all these images. It is called a sprite. So it's an image sprite. You have an image file that contains about 10 images and you have a CSS file that helps you to load them. So create a CSS image sprite instead of using several multiple images, it shaves us a lot of bytes for you. And one of the ways you can easily you know, produce this you can use um, a top tile CSS sprite generator. If you Google this, you'll see this. Uh, when you go to NPM, there's a module called Sprite that you can just use to you know, convert these files to one file. One file will hold all of this and provide your CSS. Cloudinary also automatically does this for you on the, file, on, on the fly. If you upload a lot of files to Cloudinary and you tag them, for example, I upload 10 files and I tag them with Prosper. Once I just write this URL and say slash sprite slash prosper.png, it grabs all those files create an image sprite and also automatically generate the CSS for me. So all I need to do is just include the CSS in my, in my web app and boom, I have an image file that contains a lot of other smaller images. Very good for performance. Another thing that you should do is also respect the user's hardware. This is very important. The user trusts you, all right? And when you respect the user's hardware, you can also leverage that. A very good example is what you see on the screen. You can check the user's battery level and say, hey, this guy's battery or this woman's battery level is very low, go ahead and serve high quality, no, low quality images. But if the battery is very high or the battery is charging, serve high quality images. Another thing that you can also do is to preload the video for video performance. If the battery is high, just preload the video so that the user can get a very nice experience. Also check the user's network connection. Is the user you know, connected to Wi-Fi? Or is the user using the normal cellular? If the user is using the normal cellular display low resolution images, else display. There's, there's so many things that you can do with this. But I'm just giving you an idea of what you can try out in your own apps. Another thing that you should do is set up performance budget for images. Oh my goodness, it's very, very important. Uh, Adios Money talks about this a lot, especially for JavaScript. And one thing that you can use for your teammates so that all of you can be performance aware is set up performance budget. Say, hey, 
all the images on our platforms should not, when they are, when they are rendering on the client, should not be more than 2 MB, should not be more than 3 MB. In fact, it should not be more than 1 MB. So, of course, you have put in build scripts in place that compresses all of that. But, you know, compression can, can be very funny. Sometimes it compresses but doesn't compress enough so that it doesn't lose the quality. But with this performance budget, all of you on your team can, web, can get notifications on the way that we are, when there is an image or a group of images that are exceeding the set amount of bytes that you put for it. A very good example of the app that you can use to measure this is the Calibre app. You can set it up and then you're good to go. GIFs, <laughs> GIFs are very popular on the internet. We use GIFs on Twitter, you use this everywhere else to express our opinions. Uh, look at this two, look at this GIF right now. This GIF is 10 MB on the left. I converted it to video and boom, it was 4.4 MB. This is an MP4 video. So you can imagine 10 of these GIFs on your web app. The user is rendering 10 GIFs, 10 times 10, that's 100 MB. But look at, when I, when I change it to MP4, it literally, gave me more than 50% reduction in the size of the file. Now, this is ironic because I've used, you know, GIFs in the previous slides. But then when you're, when you're sending this to the user, the client needs to save data for the user, okay? So instead of sending GIFs, maybe you can consider converting it to MP4 to provide a very good experience and also make it load fast and save the user's data. They are very expensive. So try and convert your GIF to videos. Another thing you can do, which, you know, I, I didn't put the code for this, but I talked about preloading. Uh, always preload your videos. Again, if the user is not going to see that video Im immediately, if the user is going to do something else, preload your video so that by the time the user gets to loading the video, there is no buffering. It is already like, you know, working. It's already loading the video very quickly. So another thing you should do is for your videos, ensure that your video players employ adaptive bitrate streaming. Adaptive bitrate streaming is a del you know, video delivery technique that makes sure your video starts faster with fewer buffering interruptions. And what happens is this. There is, there is a master playlist file that comes with your video files. Uh, it depends on the, that comes with your video player. It depends on the type of video player you're using. And what that does is it contains metadata about sub, you know, different video streams. And what those video streams contain, they contain like, you know, information, different types of file with different types of resolutions. And what this does is you have all these different types of file quality and resolution so that based on the user's internet connectivity, it can start loading the video with a low quality video. And then once it sees that the user's CPU is less utilized or the user's internet connectivity is better now, it just switches to a high quality video. But because you already have metadata about all these quality, uh, all these different video files, it's easy for you to switch from a low quality streaming video to a high quality video. And some of the players I've seen that include this by default is the Shaka player, the Google Shaka player. It's an open source, it's on GitHub. It's an open source video player that you can check out. You can also check out the Cloudinary video player. They are very good for the HLS and MPEG dash adaptive bitrate streaming. And if you use this for your video files, you're ensuring that your videos are being played faster on the media app that you're serving your users. As Adios Mani will say, Improving performance is a journey. Small changes can often lead to big gains. So one thing you should take away from this talk is remember more. As you are ensuring that you put all these tips and tricks into places, always measure, optimize, and monitor. And some of the tools I use, a very good tool I use is the Web Speed Test from Cloudinary. It does an image analysis of all the, the images on my website, on my app. This is our EdenLife.com, for example. We have a piece of A, which, which is pretty excellent, right? And then if we scroll, I, I scroll through like, you know, all the images that it's checked on the website. It gives every image a, a, an image score, also checks the size of the image and also offers room for improvement. That's, that's really fantastic, right? And then I can see, hey, this file is too, is too large or this is not the right format I should be serving. And I can just take all these recommendations into note these recommendations and then just fix it and then go ahead and then test it again to ensure that it is, it is very fast. Other tools that you can also use is, um, you can use Think with Google, PageSpeed Insights, SpeedCorp, your lighthouse, matrix.com. And then it gives you a lot of, you know, statistical analysis about all the images on your website and allows you to, to optimize and go ahead and measure again. And the more you measure, the more you are sure that you can give your users a very optimal experience. Uh, so I've got to the end of my presentation today. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope that you can, you know, 
put some of these things into work in your next major project. Or you can look at your existing website and say, hey, based on the recommendations Prosper has said right now, I am going to put these things. And I'm not just going to do it now. I'm just going to keep doing it you know, every day, every week to ensure that my users load their web pages fast and I can save users data. So thank you very much for listening to my talk. You can find me everywhere on the internet, on Unicode Developer, on GitHub, on Instagram, on Medium, and um, on Twitter. So thank you very much. <laughs>